Hey everybody, I'm super excited that you could join me this week. I have Aida with me again and we are sharing about using Kotlin to code Android apps. And so I would love to hear from Aida, except I wanted to, oh goodness, I'm just not the StreamYard master. So I'm gonna do it back this way. All right, please introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. My name is Aida. I am an Android developer working at DoorDash. Um, been developing Android for over six years. And the fun fact about me, um, even though I work for DoorDash, I like to cook a lot at home, especially you know during, during the COVID times. Oh, I like to cook as well. Hi, Jay Davidson. Thanks for joining Hi. us. Appreciate that. So what's your favorite thing to cook? Well, um, I actually perfected the banana pancakes, just FYI, what? you know how I spent <laughs> okay. entire year trying to cook banana pancakes every Saturday morning. And I think I nailed it nowadays. All right. So I also have a cooking blog that I haven't really published live. So maybe I'm going to mentor with you, mentor with me on how to cook banana pancakes and, and we'll have a different one. So yes. we are working together just to share about the profession of coding and what a great job it is. I, I just lo love her passion for the work that she's doing. She is working for DoorDash and she was working someplace else before that. Um, but there's so many really great job opportunities. So we're sharing this with teachers. We are sharing that Kotlin is the program language for how to code Android apps. Is that right? Yes. I actually code Google Apps Script. I am a Google developer expert and I like to code, but I don't code Android apps. So I'm really excited to learn from Aida on how to do that. But as a teacher, I'm really just wanting to pick up just enough information to be dangerous so that when I have students who think that they might be interested in the field of coding, remember that the number one operating system is Android. I have an Android yeah. phone. I use a Pixel, a lot of iPhones out there, but actually the world's number one phone uh, operating system is Android. So this is actually a great opportunity. So whether or not you're here to join us just to learn more about women coders or how to code, we hope that you will stick around just to know enough that you can give your students some great advice on how to work in this field. So we're going to take a look and get going. Yep. We are going to start with the most basic function. So this week we're not even starting with here's the software that you have to install. Is that Android Studio? Yes. I learned that last week. So I literally know nothing uh, because I don't code Android. So that is what I'm here is to learn from my wonderful friend is how to do that. So uh, we will get into that later. This week, we just want to look at really basic functionality of something that you might do with Kotlin to put into an Android app. Right? And yep. this one. Okay. So go ahead, talk about what you think would be basic, what's going on here, and what will it do? Okay. So this is the um, sni uh, snippet, code snippet of imagine some fruits that we have. And in Kotlin, if we want to create a function, we should actually define a uh, fun, you know, as a name of um, uh, the name, private fun. Ask a question. So this looks similar and then also different to JavaScript, which is what I'm more familiar with. Is this apple, pear, pineapple, strawberry, melon, blueberry? This is a list, so this is an array, correct? Yes, that is the array. Okay. We can think of so, Is list of a method? Uh, list of is a method. We can say it. it's a uh, constructive function that is available. So um, because Kotlin is just like, so awesome in terms of it has so many functions already prepared for developers to use instead of writing very verbose code lines 
it actually has a lot of functions out of box that we can actually leverage. And list of is one of them uh, okay. wh where you define uh, a, a collection, in our case, collection of fruit names, right? Yeah. And method name because it's, you know, the first time I looked at app script, it said insert sheet. And I'm like, I know what that does. Well, list of. I know what that does. Okay, so we're creating a list. Yeah, we're creating a list. We're actually creating a variable called fruits, right? Okay. And then that fruit fruits contains a list of fruit names, right? Okay. Um, and then we have a function called get random fruit. So get random fruit is the name of the function, and it returns a string. String is a type of um, very like primitive type. Can I give my explanation of a string? Would that be all right? Yeah. So I like to think about it like when we were in kindergarten and we had little beads with letters on them, and then we would make our name into a necklace. So yeah. you make a string of the characters onto a necklace. So a string refers to each of the characters, each letter put together. So text is usually described as a string. Would you feel like that's accurate? Yes, exactly. So that would be a case. And so this function get random food returns a random food. How so to if think you of got random and it picks a random, I don't have to run a whole randomizer on the array. Nope. Nope. This Kotlin oh Kotlin already does that for you. That's the thing. There's a function called random. Again, because Kotlin has a list of functions out of box available for everyone, it already takes care of it. That's okay, so let me let me put this as a teacher function. Uh, an array is your roster. It is your list of students. So you might do, and I'm going to ask you about this in a second. It says private VAL, and then you say fruits equals list of. So here's my list, and each of my students' names I put in quotes. And then I just want to do a random chooser of any of my students. So I just take that variable fruits and I do dot random. Yes. That's super easy. That's it. That's super all you need to me. Okay. So what does the private val mean? Uh, private val, it means this, it's a variable, right? Like it's yeah. a variable and private, it means this variable only available for this specific class, like within this specific class or files or other files, it's other classes. In other places. It's isolated to this particular location. Exactly. It's isolated to a particular location and no one else can have access to it. Okay. Okay. So, and that's what's private. Values, so these are my the values, the, the list items. Yes. Val, it usually refers that it's immutable. It means you cannot change it later on. You stick to it. You say you have fruits, it's immutable. And it will have a list of only this specific fruits. That's about if it. I could make this into an example of candy. I might say Skittles. And you would just know that they are red, they are blue, if they're tropical, right? What are the colors of Skittles? I only eat the red ones. Uh, green, orange, purple, right? Those are fixed. I can't go buy in the bag of Skittles and wish that they're maroon. The Skittles colors is the rainbow of colors that they are. So if this would, the fruits could just be like where I say Skittles, you know what that list of Skittles are. But instead of Skittles, you say fruit, so we know what that list of fruits is. Is that accurate? Yeah, sort of. It's accurate in terms of like, like let's say even later on you decide to switch Skittle, right? Like you're like, oh, I'm finishing up my Skittles. I want to get the new Skittle, right? So yeah. in that case, you won't be able to get the new Skittle. You have to gonna be stick with whatever it's left inside okay. that Skittle. You mean the bag of Skittles? Bag of Skittles, right. Right, yes. Yes, so you've defined it, this is what they are, and you give it an overall name of fruit, and these are your fruits. There's no kumquats. Yes, kumquat no. is fruit, but I didn't put it in my list of fruits. When I exactly. say fruit, I only mean these, and you can't change it. We're not putting exactly. kumquats in there. Exactly. So you're saying I have this five fruits inside my bag. I don't want to tell. I'm not gonna get any other new bag of fruits. I'm gonna stick with these fruits particularly. So okay, that's what val means. Lines, underneath the 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 list of which fruits we're gonna include, 
you have private, which the private means just local. Like it's just for me. It's not for anybody else. And just for what I'm doing right here. Is that what you said? Yes. It's right. localized in this specific class or like uh, per se. So like it means like, let's say you, Alice, cannot use my fruits. Like only I can use my fruits. You know, like my bag of fruits, it's only for me. So that's what it means. Yeah. Yeah. I like but, that. So like you cannot. Not assuming that fun doesn't mean we're having a party. <laughs> yeah, we can think so too. Like fun is actually really having party thing, but it's actually short for function. Hello? Okay, I think Alice dropped out. Let's wait for I'm a here, minute. I'm here. I'm here. Oh. I'm, I'm experimenting with using um, the StreamYard. My friend Melody usually runs it for me. She's awesome. Yeah. And I was trying to get just you next to the StreamYard, and you see that I failed at that quite miserably. <laughs> so sorry about that. Thanks for tolerating my explanation. So what is the fun? Fun is short for function. Yeah. So as a math teacher, if you all would remember back to algebra, and you had function and function notation, and that said you had like f of x equals x plus 3, and then for the x, you'd put in like a 7. So f of 7, so then instead of x plus 3, you have 7 plus 3. You have an yes. input and an output. And so you're wondering, when am I ever going to use this? That is something we do use quite a bit in code. In App Script, in JavaScript, we use the whole word function. So in Kotlin, we just cut that down to fun because clearly functions are fun. <laughs> exactly. Functions are fun, especially this one. Look. It does return your random fruit right there. So one line. That's all you need to. All right. So have. the get random fruit, and this is how I do it also, is when I want to define a function name, I take all the words and I smash them together. And I let the second, third, fourth word, whatever, the first letter is capitalized. So you're yep. defining the get random fruit with the parentheses. You're saying this is what it is. Now, I've never seen this notation before where you do colon string that's different than what i'm used to can you explain that yeah so in javascript um you don't need to define so defining you're telling this function that this function should only return a string nothing else no other type like we're focused only on string in javascript you don't need to do that um javascript is itself smart enough to figure out whether it wants to return something or it doesn't re doesn't want to return something so you have string here, and you have number is there anything else besides string and number um so in kotlin number called integers yes yep and we also have double it can return double type. what is double that's not a float. Uh, yeah it's like float that's we like also float. have float separately too all right so float for those of you who are listening is all of the decimals like you know, 0 0.3, 4, 7, 8, 9, it's that you have a lot of decimals, so it's floating all of the decimals, as opposed to an integer that is like 7 with no decimals. Um, exactly. Yes, okay, so we're saying string. It's not a number. It's not a float. It's not a decimal. It is text. Yes, exactly. It is text that it returns to us. Okay, I'm with you. And yep. then return... And then we actually open this function, right? Like, so we, now we have to place a logic of the function and, and that logic usually defines by the curly braces. So whenever we open the curly brace uh, next to a string and then on the bottom we close it. So it means in between these curly braces, we're gonna define the logic of the function. It means yeah. we're gonna tell what the function should do. And in yeah. our case, it just returns random fruit. I right? love this random. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like this, you see how Kotlin does have a lot of um, like out of box functions so that we can use it just like that. They're not available um, in Java, but Kotlin provides it. So cool. Yeah. We've got Melody who's saying hi. Melody is my StreamYard master. I don't know how I do anything without her. Um, she is so good for me on pretty much every single level, and I appreciate her so much. Thanks for joining us. I know that this is 
above what she would normally do, but she is so brave to try new things. So I appreciate that she's jumping in and saying hello. So what we've got is we've taken this list, it's called fruits, and then we just want a random one out of the list. So that's fruits.random, it does have the parentheses. I think it'd be very hard for me to get used to not needing the semicolon, which I know you also do not need in Python. So yep. these different uh, ways of doing it. But I love how simple this is because I feel like if I were to make an Android app, just picking a random value, like a, a random name chooser, that's something every teacher could use. And look how easy this would be. So if I were to make a random name chooser for my yep. class in an app, I do private val students equals list of and then Johnny... Alice, Nancy, Paul, Carrie, John. Okay, that's my family. <laughs> like, my exactly. And then I would do private fun, which is a function, and I'd, I'd get student or get random student or whatever I want to name it. Yeah. And that's literally something I made up. Parentheses, and then I do colon string. That's the part that's going to be tricky for me because that's not the way they do it in JavaScript. But then I just return students.random and just returns a random student. Yep. Oh my gosh, I'm going to start That's coding it. Android apps. I, I, I can think of like a hundred reasons why I would just want a random something out of a list. Exactly. And that's that's the thing kotlin does have extensive list of functions available for lists you know they cover lists so much like like different type of lists if you want like all the collections it, they have all the functions available you can filter a list the way you want it to filter you know and so on and then map if you want to map yeah okay so what is this that i'm looking at so now since Android app technically is an app that we all can see, feel, and touch, right? Because we interact with Android yeah, apps. Interface of buttons, pictures, buttons. Exactly. Text. And then there's a, also like you can do search, right? Like you can input yes. something. Exactly. So visually we know what Android apps look like and what they what do they do. And now since we created this function, now we have to call the function, right? Like we have to make sure that function is actually being called somewhere and being the result of that function being displayed. In our case, the result being displayed on the Android app, in our, the text views. So like we know um, the buttons, you know, we click on the buttons, right? And Android has, Android framework itself, operating system has also list of functions available on the UI elements. like. So if I type button good. and I push period, this functions list that you are, uh, yep. the methods that you're describing, is it multiple choice? Yes. Once you actually type in button that, it actually pre-populates for you everything. Oh, That's what the Android right. Studio yes. is for. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, when I code Google Apps Script, one of the things I love is I type something and I push period and then it says, well, what do you want to do with that? And it knows that it's a spreadsheet or it knows if it's Google Slides, and so it gives me different yep. options, right? So if I do Google Slides and I push periods, like, do you want to add a slide? And if it knows that it's a spreadsheet and I push periods, like, do you want to add a sheet? Insert sheet. So in the same way you're saying is that the Kotlin knows I have a button dot, here's things you can do with a button. Pick it from the list. So I yeah. see you're set on click listener, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to remember that, but it's multiple choice. Exactly. It's a lot of like multiple choice. Usually Android Studio like pretty smart enough once you put that because it knows the type, right? Like button in our case. And it just pre-populates your list of all the functions available for this button, right? Like for, yeah. for a button specifically. So one of them is yeah. click listener. Like there's also like you can define when if you want to do long click listener, right? Like when you want to click long time or you want to touch, for example, you know, there are a lot of all these um, functions yeah. available. So and what does it mean to listen to a click? Uh, listen to a click, it's usually a callback. Um, again, that's jargon becomes. Um, well, how can I explain? I feel like when I'm, I'm using JavaScript and Google Apps Script, 
and I create that side panel. So you know when you have an add-on for your Google Slides or Google Docs, you have the side panel, you know, you can add JavaScript in there. And I feel like it it does say this on click and the listener thing, but it's I just feel like it's it's more difficult to understand. It doesn't feel like it's clear English. It's by listen, it means it's just it's not literally listening, but when you release off of the button, it's listening for or capturing the release of the click is that yes no? okay so like do you see how you have here's the curly braces open and curly brace closed so yeah. again whenever the curly braces it means in between the curly braces you have to put your own logic what do you want to do exactly like right like the same way when we put click listener if user clicks on a button when you click what on the do button, you want to do yeah, what happens? What do you want to do? So like, or in our case, what happens is we set a text. Uh, we have a, so imagine we have a button, we have a text, and we change the text of the text view. And then um, set the so random text food. Text. Is the text, I see it's in purple. Did you define that somewhere? Um, no, it's actually, so it comes again. It's a, one of the pre-populated functions okay. available on the text view. A UI element and Android Studio again it's just so amazing it helps you right there it will help you um, populate and then find out how to, how you can do that stuff like you can simply say text and then here we go you set the text if you want to get the text from the text view you call the text as well too so you can either set or get in both cases you just okay. want to do that text okay and equal, so the text on the button, the button's going to show, it says get random fruit, which is words we made up. We made up these words. We decided that the get random fruit was get a, was the fruit dot random. Yeah. So the input, get random fruit, the output is the random, whatever the function was. Yes, exactly. So get random fruit is our function that we define. And the text view is, uh, UI element, separate UI element from the button. Yeah, I yeah. did it like for this. For this person, I don't know what a UI element is. UI is user interface. That's your buttons, it's your pop ups, it's your menus. It's things that the user who's using the app sees instead of code. Exactly. Like everything that is visual that you can yeah. see, everything that you open Facebook, Instagram, you see the user avatar right like and then you see the actual user photos all the stuff and then text it's all ui elements yes okay all right cool go to the next slide so what do we got here and then here we got this should be a giphy don't see it's playing oh it's supposed to be a gif yeah because i copied it from the google doc let me see in the Google Doc. Yeah, it's it actually GIF. It, oh, yes, it is. Why is it not? If I copy this, when I copy and pasted it, it is not a GIF. No, it's not. Okay, so let me just go ahead and switch this to our notes. So I'm going to stop my screen share. I'm going to screen share our notes. So next time, we're going to build it right in the slides. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll do that next time. Uh, I think I shared the exact same thing. It would be really great if I was good at using technology. <laughs> Which one of these is a Google Doc? You know what it is? It's because they're both Google Sites and I have to switch the tab. Um, that one. How's that? Yes. That's there, we go. there we go. Sorry about that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't really use a GIF, so I apologize. So when, when you click me on the button, it's getting that random, the text is replaced from click me, it's replacing the text. Okay, this makes sense to me. I was looking at the code and I'm like, what? So it's taking the text and you said it equals, the text is equal to, so I have this text box. When yes. I click it, the text box changes to the random yes. value. So you see the every text. time it's being clicked, it becomes yep. a different fruit. Yep, so text, ah. the text of the text box. Ah. Getting new values. Yep. Totally get it. Totally get it. I just love how simple that was. It was so few lines of code. 
Awesome. Exactly. That's okay. what it is. So, you know, all of us have some sort of a device. Most likely we have some sort of a smartphone that has buttons on it, user interface that you would click. So friends, if you have students who really love their phones, uh, why don't you suggest to them that this isn't that hard? Let's take a quick look again at really how quick and easy it was to make your own app, because they can do this. And share screen, and I'm gonna go to this one, and just back this up. Oh wait, I'm, forget it, just back it up here, and zoom in. So we get list of, we have a list of our student names, a list of our fruit, whatever, and then we make up words. This get random fruit is something Aida just made for herself, and then we do the list name dot random and just replace the text with that function, and that is pretty much it. So you can create what's actually a pretty dang useful phone app. Yep, and I think right now it's still displaying the slides. The draw the it's it's on the slides or is on the Google Docs? Uh, slides share mode. Forget it. All right. <laughs> Next week, Melody is going to join us, and she is going hey. to run the stream share for me because I'm clearly not talented at using Streamyard, but I am really good at using a spreadsheet, and I really am appreciative that Ada that you are I willing to share what you know here with everybody. Um, Melody says her hubs has an Android and she's gonna have her daughter code. You don't even know what a big deal this is. Um, Melody, I, I just love Melody, she is so great. So I'm so excited that you were able to help her to see that her daughter can do this. And she says she's gonna join us because we need more awesome women here talking about how powerful it is to be able to code and to do these things. So thank you, Melody, for joining us. And for those of you who are teachers who are thinking that you are not necessarily interested in coding, but want to learn at least enough to help advise your students on what is a great career, we really appreciate and thank you for joining us. So we will see you next week where we will do just a little step hopefully not too overwhelming to just help you to understand what is Kotlin and why your students would care about it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.